What's up, traders? What's up, tycoons? Super excited for today's video. We have to talk about a lot in today's video, all right? We really need to talk about energy, all right? There's some amazing energy charts I want to show you. And of course, we have to talk about TLT, what the heck is happening with the bond market, and we'll take a quick look at SPX, the S&P 500, as well in today's video. Now, the content provided on this YouTube channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So please be sure to read through the full disclaimer. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Now, these are some ratio charts. We have XLE versus the S&P 500 here, and the analysis is just playing out absolutely beautiful, y'all. We're going to dive into this chart a little bit more. And if you're new to the channel, you know, I've really been tracking this for a long time, right? Really since 2023 has started. Uh, and even before then, I've been really bullish on energy. We came back down to some key levels. We take a look at the XLE slash XLK chart. So this is energy versus tech. And I've had this drawing here of a massive cup and handle forming for a while. And yet again, we came down to our key levels and we're starting to see a rebound. Now, before we get into the TA, all right, that'll be in the last half of the video. So if you want to just fast forward to the last half, there's some important data that I want to show you guys as always. So be sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And the client survey here indicates that long duration positioning is more widely held now than at any point over the last five to 10 years. Now, this is the JP Morgan Treasury Client Survey Index. So this is actually long treasuries, right? This is speaking of treasuries in specifics. Um, and I'm actually one of these people now, okay? Uh, when TLT crashed and went below $95, I've been waiting for TLT to get back down to 95. I did start a long position. Now, that's what works for me. I have my own reasons behind it. And it's definitely not a short-term trade, all right? I'll dive into that more a little bit later when we get into TLT. But you can see that, you know, bonds really are attractive right now. And it's largely due to the high yields, right? We've been in an environment where there's been no yields and basically you know, no returns for investing in bonds. So it makes a lot of sense that people are actually being attracted to the bond market now. Now, the stock market has been overwhelmingly bullish up until here recently, okay? Here recently, we have seen some pullbacks in the market. Uh, and one of the big reasons that, you know, everything's been bullish, if you take a look at the earnings beat data, 68% have beat, okay? Um, so that is really amazing. Almost 70%, guys. Uh, those are good numbers there, all right? Now, the thing about that is that earnings expectations were lowered so much that it's very easy for companies to beat. Um, I covered in a previous video that, actually the companies beating are actually underperforming the companies missing uh earnings so that's a really interesting you know series of events that we're having in the market right now all right still lots of big earnings coming up okay we have disney coming up tomorrow after the close uh we have roblox here as well i like roblox a lot i'm not going to play it for earnings uh, but I do like this one, all right? They actually just implemented a 17 and up version of Roblox. And I think that that's going to be really, really pivotal for them in the long term. Uh, lots of companies reporting today, actually, as well. You know, you have Ooga Booga AMC, uh, Rivian. I know a lot of people really like Rivian. You have Upstart as well. You have Mara, lovely Mara. Soundhound is going to be interesting as well. This is a company uh, that, you know, has been getting a lot of attention from the AI hype, right? And the whole AI wave. Uh, will that play out in earnings? And will this stock actually, uh, you know, result positively, um, you know, based off of their earnings? Or will this crash like many other stocks? Okay, plenty more to come throughout the rest of the week. We have Alibaba. We have BKKT. This is a crypto related one. Uh, so really going to be interested to see how some of these play out. Now, when you look at the rolling four week average trends by market cap, you can see that large claps have actually flipped the flows to negative. OK, so that's what we're seeing here on this chart. We're seeing the uh, the flows have actually flipped to negative. And when you look at the mid caps, there's been outflows since July of 2023. And when you take a look at the mid cap net buys on a four week average, we're actually starting to see them tick up a little bit, right? So, you know, there's been outflows and now we're starting to see it tick up a little bit into the mid cap. So pay attention to some of the mid caps. The small caps is what's really interesting. When you take a look at the small cap net buys, we're actually seeing a huge surge right here. So, you know, 
in my opinion, what we're seeing is a little bit of healthy market rotation, right? Apple is obviously dropping like a rock and Apple is one of the biggest stocks there is and really a huge, huge part of several, several, we're talking hundreds of ETFs have Apple in it. So, you know, Apple going down is going to bring a lot of the market down, but it seems like small caps and maybe mid caps may be getting some of that attention. Now, um, also, we've been covering this a lot. This is stuff that's pretty important, in my opinion. This is the pre-election year seasonal data. And what you want to pay attention to is the dotted lines, right? These are all of the pre-election years. And you can see that, you know, August, typically the first eight trading days do not look good for the market, right? We see all the dotted lines are in a downtrend here. And, you know, we've been actually using this type of data to really help us navigate the market from a seasonality standpoint. And, you know, we're not going long, right? We haven't really been going long unless it's short-term trades, you know, quick little pops that we're looking to play. And we've actually been going short in the Discord and doing really, really well. Uh, we had some great short positions that we were able to close this morning. And we actually closed those and rode this move up that the market's currently having rebounding after that really dramatic drop. And we're looking and waiting for our next short position. Now, this is the S&P 500 performance after a negative first week of August when preceded by a 10% plus January to July. And you can see here that essentially, um, you know, the returns don't look the best, right? I mean, when you have this, uh, this, this really big rally in the first half of the year, um, August typically doesn't tend to be the best, right? When you look at the returns, you can see here that the uh, they're, they're pretty much all negative right here, okay? So, you know, it's not a lot of surprise when you look at this chart and when you look at this chart that we're seeing a pullback already in August, okay? This is almost the same data, um, but this is uh, including when uh, it's down more than 1% and preceded by a 10% move in January to July. And you can see it's very similar data right here, okay? Uh, just showing, you know, kind of uh, some of the returns, okay? Now, this is the forward P.E. ratio for the S&P 500. Uh, what I want to highlight here is that um, the 25-year average, okay, is right here at 16.78. And so the market is a little bit frothy. It's not extremely frothy at levels like this and like this, but we are above that 25-year average here of 16.78. And uh, I'm sure that this is actually a little bit lower now, now that the market's been dropping. But we are seeing a little bit of mean reversion here in the P.E. ratio, uh, the forward P.E. ratio for the S&P 500. Now, the yield curve is starting to uninvert here, all right? Uh, we are starting to get that a little bit. Uh, so that's something good to see, right? That's a good sign. Uh, but the big thing that people need to be cautious of is that when the yield curve actually completely uninverts and is not inverted anymore, that's typically when we tend to see the recession. So uh, this has been the longest awaited recession and the most predicted recession pretty much in history. People have been waiting for it all of 2022, all of 2023, and now it's being pushed out and expected to happen in 2024. So we'll see if it ever actually comes but if the yield curve is uninverted in 2024, then that really could be a sign that we actually end up getting that recession. Now, um, this is just some data right here uh, going over container rates. I know it's a little bit blurry right here, but uh, essentially what you want to look at is the uptick that we're seeing in container rates right here. And so this is meaning that shipping is going to uh, is costing more money um, and, you know, more shipping could result in higher prices for everything, okay, uh, all around for all the different type of goods that are being transported uh, across these shipping lanes, right? You see we have LA to Shanghai, Shanghai to LA, New York to Rotterdam, Shanghai to Rotterdam, Shanghai to Genoa. These are just some of the different major shipping lanes that we have. And if you look at the rising diesel prices that tracks inflation, you can see New York Harbor Diesel in the dark blue, and then we have US CPI year over year in the light blue. And you can see that these two mirror each other very closely, okay, uh, and typically, you know, follow the same type of trend and patterns. And we can see that we've had a divergence here where the diesel gas prices have been rising. Meanwhile, US CPI year over year has been coming down. So in my opinion, this is just one thing to consider that, you know, maybe some of those favorable CPI reports that we've been getting, maybe we're not going to get those the next one, two, three, four CPI reports, right? 
There's no guarantees, but if this chart is going to continue having a correlation with CPI and the New York Harbor diesel prices, um, then it's very possible we could start to see CPI slowly start to creep back up. Now, this is a great segue into our energy chart, so let's go ahead and take a look at those. Here we have our first one here, and this is the XLE divided by XLK. So this is your energy divided by tech ratio. And um, if you're enjoying the video this far, guys, don't forget, I just started a brand new newsletter, okay? We just sent the first emails out this week, and I'm actually giving free trade ideas in the newsletter, okay? On top of the free trade ideas, I'm also just giving out some really good content in general. Uh, it's called Investment Intelligence, and there's an uh, a link to join the newsletter, All right, It's completely free, and it's in the description or the pinned comment down below. Now, let's get back to the chart. So we can see, you know, prior resistance becomes new support here. In here, and we come back down to this level again, and this is what we were looking for, right? We've got this massive cup that we formed here, and then we were expecting this pullback, and we see that you know it's very possible we're bottoming out right here and starting our handle. And if we can break out above our highs here, and we're to just draw a little bit of a trend line from there to there, let me uh, actually do this for you guys real quick, then we would look for our cup and handle breakout, okay? And this is bullish on energy. If we take a look at the XLE slash SPY chart, right, and we take a, uh, we compare energy to the S&P 500, uh, this is another chart that I've been showing for a while, guys. And, um, you know, the, the analysis is really just playing out perfectly, right? We've got these areas of liquidity here and here, and you can see we got a five-wave structure to the upside. The market tends to move in five-wave and three-wave structures. After we got our five-wave structure, we got our correction. Pa uh, prior resistance, okay, becomes new support. All right, and old support over here becomes new resistance. We're again targeting this upward resistance area, the liquidity zone. And if we move up, we're looking ultimately for another five wave structure to take us to the highs of 2016. Now, I know a lot of people don't seem to be bullish on energy, um, but you know, Warren Buffett has been buying the crap out of Oxy, okay? Uh, and you know, he's been buying tons and tons of it uh, for a very long time at the $60 price. Uh, right around that $60 range. So let's actually take a look at Oxy really quick. And I like this setup a lot. Okay, we're going to start here on a smaller time frame and look at our daily chart and zoom out so we can see the bigger picture. But you guys can see for 2022, it's really been ranging this entire period, right? With lows of 51 up here to highs of, you know, around 76, 77, something like that. You know, it has been ranging for a long time, but to me, we're starting to form this nice rounded bottom here. We have a strong buying channel and these trend lines right here, here and here, these signify a chart pattern known as an inverse bump and run pattern. Now, if you guys have been watching the channel, you guys know that this bump and run pattern has slowly become one of my new favorite patterns there is in the market. And we're testing the top trend line right now. Not only that, we have our bullish channel here. If we can break this top trend line, it's, it would make a lot of sense for us to continue up towards this bullish channel to the highs here of around 67, maybe even potentially 70 on Oxy, just depending on how much the momentum moves. If we were to zoom out and go to a monthly time frame and take a look at things from a monthly time frame, what do we see, guys? We see a massive inverse bump and handle or, or bump and run pattern forming here on the monthly chart. And if Warren Buffett's been buying at the $60, uh, around that $60 price level, I really like it, right? So, you know, um, you know, a good trade idea, okay, would be, you know, going long above this 59 level right here, 59.62, uh, whatever that exact level is. Yeah, 59.62. And, you know, if you end up closing below 59.62 on a daily or weekly, whatever time frame you prefer, uh, then you could go ahead and get out of it. And the upside potential looks really, really good for the long term. Remember, this is a monthly chart, not a short term chart. So, for this massive inverse bump and uh, run pattern to play out, I mean, this would take at least six months, maybe even years, maybe even a year, two, three years. But that would put Oxy back up here towards its highs of 113. So I really wouldn't be surprised to see if in 2025 or sooner, this stock is trading at $100 to potentially up to 110 now remember, Buffett's been buying right above this level of 59.62 here up in the 60s. Now let's go back to our daily time frame and talk about TLT because TLT has been on a massive puke fest 
But um, as you know, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I've been waiting for it to come back and fill this gap for a very long time. So um, for me, it makes a lot of sense to uh, start investing in TLT slowly for the long term, uh, definitely not playing the short term here. Um, and at the moment, I currently do actually have some uh, some uh, put hedges to the downside uh, with a little bit of a shorter expiration. Now, the reason I went long is because look at where we came down to, guys. I've been mentioning that, you know, we had this larger structure here. We got the breakdown retest and we're looking for the gap fill. We came exactly down right here to 94.73, started to find some support and rebound. And, um, you know, those positions are doing very, very nicely now. And it makes a lot of sense to hedge, right? Because we have to keep in mind that all of this move right here could be a dead cat bounce, okay? This could all be a dead cat bounce after such a huge move to the downside, right? In a very short amount of time, TLT went from 102.88 all the way down to $94, below $95. That's a dramatic move, especially for the bond market, right? I mean, the bond market has literally been more volatile than the stock market. If we were to throw on some fibs right here, okay, and just take our recent swing high, okay, and connect it down here to the lows, and we'll go ahead and uh, put the right things on here, all right, and take a look at these really quickly. You guys can see what it is that we're looking at, right? And right now we are at our 23 uh, uh, Fibonacci retracement and we're kind of bouncing off of there of support right around this 96 level that we have as support here as well. Uh, TLT could continue pushing up higher to 97.77. We have that level at 98.15. That was support. That's going to be new resistance as well. And then we have 99.76 and 101.18. All of these are going to be healthy retracement levels after such a huge move down, right? So we could bounce up to any of these and keep in mind that through this process of puking, TLT has created a gap here created a gap here. And we also have a new gap down right here. So at the moment, we are holding above some of our anchored VWAPs. Uh, but when you take a look at the larger anchored VWAPs, such as the quarterly or the yearly, you can see that these are curling down. These are in a downward trend. Uh, so it would make a lot of sense for us to, you know, if we hold these anchored VWAPs to continue trending up higher and try to get a little bit towards them. And these are the areas where large institutions uh, and market makers, hedge funds, you know, this is where they like to buy and sell things, right? Is going to be at that average volume weighted price. Now, whether it's a yearly, uh, a monthly, a weekly, a year to date, it all depends, but they really do use all of those. So I just wanted to show you guys TLT real quick. Now, I think it's Peter Lynch that is actually short the 30 year treasury. Uh, I can't remember exactly, uh, but you know, yet again, he's kind of timing a market bottom. And so we had this trend line here and it appeared that treasuries were going to break out and come up to 4.227 or 4.333. Uh, this is the TNX, the 10 year treasury. But it appears we actually may have gotten a look above and fail. Right. And this is pretty significant. All right. Uh, there's no guarantee, but that's what it's appearing like at the moment okay if we take a look the reason a look above and fail is significant is because this moment right here on the retest of the trend line that is literally the opportunity for bulls to show that they're in control and take advantage of this opportunity when they don't take advantage of that opportunity it shows you that it was a false breakout and that bears are actually in control so at the moment we're seeing signs i mean look at this huge bearish engulfing candlestick right here we're seeing signs on the TNX that actually bears could be in control, okay? Um, now, there is a short-term gap up right here, and that's going to be right at our trend line fill as well, okay, if that gap fills. So we may come up and retest this trend line here in the short term, which is why I have some short-term puts on TLT. It just makes a lot of sense to me, right, to protect myself to the downside if I'm going long uh, in such a volatile environment. Now, let's go ahead and get into the SPX and take a look at the S&P 500. Uh, the S&P 500 has so many gaps down, guys. Uh, many, many, many gaps down. Now, back in the day, all right, we posted this in the Discord. I also posted this on YouTube. You know, we had our one, two, three, four, five wave move. You can see we hit our wave five targets here. And this wave four was super clean, right? We started really going long, heavy long here because we had a nice, clear ABCDE wave four correction. Uh, and that was a strong sign that we were going to continue this move to the upside and get a wave five. And it makes a lot of sense for us now to get an ABC correction to the downside now. So, you know, essentially we're looking for a move like this, A, 
B, and we could come up and fill this gap up here on SPX right around 4575. That's definitely a possibility before continuing this downtrend. And if we break 4550, I think that 4383 is going to be the next target zone. So now that we're actually looking at the S&P 500, we're looking at the SPX. Remember, guys, seasonality says that the first eight days are not very good. And remember, these are trading days, okay, not calendar days. So not the actual eighth. But you have to trade what's in front of you, right? You can't let your bias really break through there, all right? If I was to simply draw a trend line here, okay, and then we come in and draw a trend line like this, you can see that yet again, we have my favorite inverse bump and run pattern right here. We have a bullish divergence where the S&P has been making higher lows here while continuing to make lower lows. And it makes a lot of sense that we're seeing some movement to the upside. Um, you know, we I mentioned we closed short positions this morning. We went long in the Discord and, you know, we're waiting now for the next optimal trade, right? Uh, we're going to look and see, you know, is this just a healthy retracement to continue the downtrend or potentially are we going to come up here and fill this gap, um, you know, uh, sometime in the near future? Remember, trade the chart that's in front of you. Don't let your emotions take control. Don't let your bias take control and look for any ways that you guys can make profit, even if it goes against, um, you know, what it is that you want to trade with your gut. Sometimes people's gut feelings are wrong, and you just have to recognize that and take advantage of that and be able to, you know, recognize when you're letting, um, and really just, you know, whenever you're letting yourself miss out on profits, right? We don't want to do that. Thank you guys for watching today's video. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more. And please don't forget to sign up for my newsletter using the link in the description or the pinned comment down below. Uh, that'll really help support me out.